It is now the month of October, which means I must once again harness the dark energy that will allow me to present mathematics with startling clarity for another year until October strikes again. In today's spooky Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be answering a fun combinatorics question. How many ways can we write a positive integer n as an ordered sum of ones and twos? I must now remove my spooky right glove so that I can actually use a dry erase marker and write legibly. So, to explain the question, consider a positive integer n. There are many possible values for our positive integer n. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Any of those wonderful positive integers. We want to know how many ways can we write a positive integer n as an ordered sum of ones and twos. Let's call that number a n. So a n is the number of ways we can write n as an ordered sum of ones and twos. For the number one, there's just one way we could do it. We could just write it as one. Pretty boring, not very illuminative. What about the number two? Well, we could write two as one plus one, or we could just write it as two. So there are two ways we can write two as an ordered sum of ones and twos. Now three is a little more helpful. Three kind of lets us know what we're talking about. How many ways can we write three as an ordered sum of ones and twos? Well, we can write it as one plus one plus one, or we can write it as one plus two, or we can write it as two plus one. So there are three ways. So notice we count one plus two and two plus one separately because we're counting ordered sums. So even though their terms are the same, they're in a different order, so we count them separately. We answered this question in a previous lesson, and I'll leave a link to that lesson in the description. But when we answered the question, we were scared beyond words to find that the solution actually turned out to be a Fibonacci sequence. We kind of see that here. Three, what is that? Well, that's one plus two. But that must just be a coincidence, right? Surely, it's not a Fibonacci sequence. Oh, but it is. The next number is two plus three, which is five. That's the number of ways we can write four as an ordered sum of ones and twos. The number of ways we can write five as an, as, as an ordered sum of ones and twos, it's three plus five, there are eight ways. What are the odds of that? Kind of spooky, why is the Fibonacci sequence here? Well, we'll figure that out in today's lesson. In the previous lesson on this topic, we pretty easily found that we could find a n, the number of ways of writing n as an ordered sum of ones and twos, by taking the sum from i equals zero to i equals half of n rounded down, that's the ceiling function, of n minus i choose i. And this sum works just fine, but the Fibonacci sequence explanation is more clever and more clear. So let's get rid of this ugly sum. Again, you can check out that lesson, link in the description if you're interested. But let's use some Fibonacci kind of reasoning to solve this problem. Why is the Fibonacci sequence here? And we could just go ahead and erase these numbers because we'll find them again using this wonderful reasoning. So we know, of course, let me take a breath, we know, of course, there's only one way that we can write the number one as an ordered sum of, uh, of ones and twos. We can just write one, that's the only way to do it. There are two ways that we can write two as an ordered sum of ones and twos. So we've got the first two terms in our sequence, we should be able to use those to explain the underlying Fibonacci nature of what's going on here. So let's do it. Consider all the ways that we could write three as an ordered sum of ones and twos. We could split those sums into two categories. There are the sums that end in one, like one plus one plus one. And there are the sums that end in two, like one plus two. Now consider all the sums that end in one. Certainly, all of the terms preceding that final one must equal three minus one, or two. Because when we add that final one back in, we must get three. Since all of the preceding terms must equal two, the number of ways we can write three as an ordered sum of ones and twos that ends in one is equal to the number of ways we can write two as an ordered sum of ones and twos. Because for all of those sums that equal two, we can just add a one to the end of it to get a sum for three.
The reasoning is similar here. For all of those ordered sums of ones and twos that are equal to three and end in two, the terms that precede that final two must be equal to three minus two, or one, because when we add that final two back in, we must get three. So the number of ways that we can write three as an ordered sum of ones and twos that ends in two is equal to the number of ways we can write one as an ordered sum of ones and twos. So we see the number of ways we can write three as an ordered sum of ones and twos is equal to the number of ways we can do it with one and the number of ways we can do it with two, which is one plus two, which is three. Now there's a lot of ones and twos and threes in that explanation, so let's explain it one more time with the number four, and hopefully that will make it crystal clear. Again, we're trying to count the number of ways we can write four as an ordered sum of ones and twos. To do that, we split the sums into two categories. There are the sums that are equal to four that end in one, like one plus two plus one, for example. And there are the sums that are equal to four that end in two, like one plus one plus two, for example. All, and, and these are the only two possibilities, because we're counting ordered sums of ones and twos. So every sum either ends in one or ends in two. Now, among all the sums that end in one, all of the terms preceding that final one must be equal to four minus one, or three, because when we add that final one back in, we must get four. So the number of ways we can write four as a sum that ends in one is equal to the number of ways we can write three. And of course, when we talk about sums right now, we're only talking about sums of ones and twos because that's what we're interested in. Similarly, for all the sums that end in two, the terms preceding the final two must be equal to four minus two or two, because when we add the final two back in, we must get four. So the number of ways we can write fours and ordered sums of ones and twos that end in two is equal to the number of ways we can write two as an ordered sum of ones and twos, because for all of those sums that are equal to two, we can just add a two to the end of it to get four. Similarly here, for all of those sums that are equal to three, we can just add a one to the end of it to get four. So how many ways can we write four as an ordered sum of ones and twos? Well, every way that we can write two as an ordered sum of ones and twos gives us a way to write four as an ordered sum of ones and twos. And every way we can write three as an ordered sum of ones and twos gives us a way we can write four as an ordered sum of ones and twos. Together, those are all of the ways we can write four as an ordered sum of ones and twos. And so there are two plus three or five ways. Similarly, how many ways can we write five as an ordered sum of ones and twos? Well, it's three plus five or eight. So now to once more quickly explain the crucial parts with n equals five, every ordered sum of ones and twos either ends in one or ends in two. Among the sums that end in one, all of the terms before the final number must be equal to four. So it's just the number of ways that we can write four as an ordered sum. Among all of the sums that end in two, all the preceding terms must be equal to five minus two or three. So it's just the number of ways we can write three as an ordered sum. So we add those two numbers together and that gives us a five. The number of ways we can write five is an ordered sum of ones and twos. And of course, this very clever reasoning can answer the question for any value of n as long as we've got the preceding two values. And that's why the Fibonacci sequence is popping up here. Pretty fun little problem, and I hope this video helped you understand why the Fibonacci sequence is the answer to the problem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the spookiest math lessons on the internet.